singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. I think I'm working. You good? I'm good to go, man. All right. Well, here we go, everybody. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Justin Moore Podcast here on Season 4, Episode 11. Uh, I'm JR the Handler, your trusty sidekick. And with me, as always, is the namesake of this podcast, my brother, Mr. Justin Moore. What's going on, JM? Yeah, we missed you guys last week, which was was my fault. Uh, I had a ton going on, and we, uh, if you guys um, remember, we had crazy weather across much of the South, uh, in particular, and and uh, three days. I know we got three days straight of you know severe thunderstorms, tornado warnings, and craziness so um and then we were busy with you know getting ready for easter and so anyway sorry we didn't know we were going to miss but we did uh but it, it it's happens. all good but, yeah i was gonna yeah, say hey but so. even you know you try to skip school growing up you want to skip school for stuff and then every now and then you really got to miss for something it's when you don't want to it's like you know it just sometimes right. you just got to miss but yeah we didn't plan on that but uh hope everybody jumps back on and listens this week uh because we got a lot to talk about because hell i ain't even talked to you really just we did a show the other week in georgia and we hung some but me and you you've been busy i've been at home busy uh and we ain't really caught up on much of anything uh, no we really more, haven't more than just little business tech stuff but uh, yeah, we had some of that too. I hope everybody's okay out there. It was pretty, pretty brutal. Yeah. Everybody I've talked to, you know, from my people in Mississippi and Central Alabama to you guys up there and some people in Nashville sending pictures and stuff. I mean, you know, winds and tornadoes and stuff. And I know, uh, I mean, just the night but we recording today is Tuesday the nineteenth. Just uh, the night uh, night before last, even we had another gust come through and it was straight line winds of like seventy miles an hour, knocked some yeah. people's trees and stuff. So. We're, we're pretty today. This might be the first time I've ever got to do this. I've got my garage door open in my studio, so I'm open-air studio today. You know, usually I'm burning nice. up, and i got to have the air at 65 degrees, but uh, it's nice. It's cool. It got cool last night uh, after the storms finally pushed through and uh, yeah. slept with the windows open. I mean, it was it was perfect. Oh, that's so, awesome. Did you guys have any um, – I know you, you're bad about having trees down where you're at because you got a lot of trees there kind of on the outskirts there. Did y'all have any down on the road or anything, or did y'all come out okay? Yeah, nothing on on our road but we did have um have a couple go down out in the woods and then one out in the pasture and so i've got to get out with the chainsaw and get to work on that i'm trying to wait till it dries up just a little bit but um oh yeah we've had a couple of days of sunshine today like you said it's a little cooler today kind of weird man uh, i mean it's you know mid 60s but it right. feels really good actually but yeah pretty day no clouds or anything like that so if we keep getting weather like that um it'll dry up i can maybe get to it uh later this week and uh you know south that's all he wants to do is go oh, i was gonna stuff, say you, you know, gotta so. wait for him to get out of school no matter what so that's an yeah, afternoon project so, but uh but anyway yeah man just uh we, we we were fortunate you know the first of the three days in Arkansas, I'm not talking about specifically where we are, but it was kind of, I think, the worst of it, and they were expecting it to be the opposite, you know. I think uh, I think it was a Monday through Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, or a Tuesday through Thursday, something like that. And, and so we were expecting, uh, you know, to maybe have to go to the – uh safe room or whatever right. you know and it, it it ended up not being that big of a deal and i was going to ask you because we talked about this on the radio show and i don't know if this is an age thing or or if i'm just a strange guy or what but i've gotten to where i almost enjoy i don't want anybody to get hurt obviously and i don't want any property to get damaged and stuff like that but assuming neither of those things happen I've almost gotten to the point where I enjoy severe weather and watching all of the uh, weather guys and gals uh, <laughs> talk about it in real time. Is that crazy? I, I, I mean, a, a hair, but uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat. I watch. We we can't. We're like, ooh, let's go see what Alan Seals is saying about it. And yeah, we watched the. We 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 definitely. 
uh, are zoned in and I'm worried about the areas. And, I, yeah, I don't think I worried about it as much back then. Um, I know my dad always yeah. said he liked the storms, I, but as far as watching the weather in real time, yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, I mean, I, I almost enjoy a good storm. It's crazy, I, 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 and I never did. And I, I remember my grandpa, he, he would watch, I mean, he would watch the Weather Channel like 12 hours a day. Right. And I'm like, it's nothing's happening. It's the same. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what they said it's going to do, and they're saying the same thing over and over, and I've got to that point, man. I don't know what it is. But, but anyway, so it was – I was somewhat disappointed it, it wasn't worse, <laughs> but but, yeah. but glad that, but glad, glad that but yeah. nobody around here got hurt and nobody had any property damage. We didn't lose power, which is good, and because we're susceptible to that. And um, but anyway, that's why we weren't with you. Plus, um, obviously Easter. Hopefully, everybody had a good Easter out there. Uh, we didn't really do a a ton, quite honestly. We usually get together and have lunch or something like that as a family and that was the plan but ella had a, a softball tournament uh up in uh the northwest part of the state here in arkansas bentonville arkansas which is north of the school and so that's like a four four plus hour ride for us and and so speaking of the weather we got up there we, we played friday night um this past friday night play our first game and then we're supposed to play at eight the next morning and it's just terrible weather it's in the 40s it's mm. rainy miserable and so we're all thinking and kind of hoping quite honestly because we knew we had church stuff sunday for easter and that kind of stuff um, that it was going to get canceled well they kept pushing it was like being at the airport right when your flight keeps getting delayed so they push it back an hour and then another hour and the I don't think we ended up playing until noon or something like that. And then um, we played really well and won a lot of ball games, so we just kept playing back to back oh, to wow. back to back to back. And Long we didn't get day home. at the ballpark. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get home till like 2 or 3 in the morning. Woo. And then obviously up for church. And so I guess we got third out of, I don't know, 15, 16 teams, whatever it was. So they played well. And we really had an opportunity to win the whole tournament. We got beat by – <laughs> the team that won it all and were were up in the last inning a run with only two outs to get to win to close the game out and we got two really really poor calls i almost got thrown out uh my buddy keith did get thrown out okay um and he wasn't even coaching he got <laughs> thrown out from the from the stands um but uh but yeah, so played played ball, played well. Ella had a good tournament. Uh, Audrey had a great tournament. She's she's pitched on our league teams before, but we decided strategically because she pitches a little slower and she's a lefty, so it's a different angle and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of these teams are used to hitting faster pitchers, you know. And so we thought let's let's throw a little wrinkle at them and see. Uh, in this in this game, this one particular game. If it works, and uh, she, it was awesome to see her. She she pitched great, two full innings, went all the way through their batting order once, uh, and so we we got us another little uh, tournament pitcher now. We, there you go. Kinda, she's been developing, and and so we said let's just give it a go and see what happens. She pitched another time or two in the tournament, so pretty proud of her. I know Brock little cousin was, coming uh, through, but yeah, it was awesome. But you know the other thing is. Um, as you know, uh, another reason we weren't on with you last week, Ella got the flu, as did four or five other girls on our team. So for them to go out there and and play as well as they did, all Coming of them with of the that. flu, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it was it was pretty impressive. So is she better now. She is. You know, it's it's been a kind of the way. I mean, literally, we had one, two, I think five of our girls. Uh, had it if not six have had it tucker's got it right now um and so it, usually the first day they're kind of they're real puny um yeah. and then then it's kind of a mild kind of almost sinusy kind of thing right uh, but they you know they were just a little more lethargic and that kind of stuff so it was even more impressive that they played so well that's awesome well, so none of the parents got sick everybody's good 
Not yet. I think one one of our dads got sick, um, yeah. and he said it was it was rough on him for three or four days. But so maybe it's milder for the kids. But I mean, it was it just kind of ran all the way through our team. Right. You know? Wow. Hey, while while we're on the medical <laughs> minute here, um, how about uh, one of your most uh, hated things over the past few years is finally coming to an end? Mask at the airport. Yes, it finally came to an end as we're <laughs> as we're doing this podcast yesterday. Yeah, and uh, Basil, my co-host on the radio show, as you obviously know. Yep, he was coming home yesterday from Italy. He and his girlfriend, longtime girlfriend, were in Italy last week, and yep, and um, and I asked him because they were. I was watching on the news. Could this you imagine morning. him in Italy? Could you imagine oh him be bopping around just snapping pictures and <laughs> just over the top about everything? And, yeah, I wonder what ridiculous. he wore. I wonder what he wore. I need some pictures of this. But anyway, sorry. So he's oh, coming yeah, back for a long was, flight he was back. Sending us pictures. Yeah. So as I was watching the news this morning, this was his first day back on the show. I was watching the news this morning, and literally people got word. You know, like the stewardesses and the pilots etc got word in some cases while they were in the air yeah it and lost the mask and yep. so i asked him i said man did y'all did that happen because i think that that would be kind of an interesting you know it's, it's really going to be kind of part of history right if you think about it i mean yeah and so um you know we've been dealing with that for what two or three years now and yeah. so he said no that he um <clears throat> he they missed that window or whatever uh, their travel time but right. uh maybe yeah people were just taking them off right in the airplane in the airports people cheering you know so yeah. and quite honestly i was thinking to myself now i could see myself flying maybe a little more frequently <laughs> because it's that big a deal to me i know when you're know. sitting in an airplane for two three hours or whatever yeah. i mean and you look, can't hardly you can't breathe that great no way i mean no, mm -mm. i mean you know it's just no you know. and and i mean to our you know medical professionals out there who are listeners or fans or whatever I, i'm certainly uh, i know that you guys deal with it on a daily basis every day and always have to and so i don't want to take away from that but you know it, it is a nuisance there's no doubt about that and so you know not to to have to deal with that i mean it's kind of a big deal you know yeah i mean um and, and it gives everybody the choice you know freedom america you can wear one if you want to. right exactly yeah to. exactly that's where i'm at i'm like because i because right. i know some people will stink breath don't need to wear them and if you're sick <laughs> yeah you should probably wear one and i tell you something i've said since before pre thing what about we all learn in elementary school like arms length apart how about let's just do that in general you don't got to go six feet how about but just don't all be all up on me i mean yeah, not, if, unless sense, i know you really. i mean you don't know and i don't know where you know and i don't you don't want me up on you if you don't know me if we know each other that's you know but anyway until something unless you got to but if there's room everybody just arms length apart like elementary school walking in the line going to yeah. the cafeteria that easy it's all you got to yeah. do yeah. so anyway well yeah Common i knew you done so. Yeah, I knew you would appreciate that, and uh, so maybe that'll make some of our travel because we do got some. Uh, if you go to justinmoremusic dot com and check out those tour dates, we're going out west uh, in a month or so. We've got some back and forth across the country travel, so we're going to be um, we're going to be on some planes. Um, so <clears throat> glad that all worked yeah. out. Well, um, as we mentioned a few weeks ago, leading up to this, uh, I know we took last week off, but the week before we had our buddy Heath Sanders on talk about raised <laughs> on red. That was good stuff. Y'all go check that out if you haven't already. Go download that. Uh, leave some comments on social media for the boys for that. Um, it's rocking on along. But we mentioned we've got a great guest for this week. And we're going to go ahead and bring him on now. If we want to, let's take, I'll tell you what, let's take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have on the one and only, by God, Craig Campbell. Stay tuned here on the Justin Moore Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. 
Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR, and Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out; it's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer. Shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me, you can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, got him pulling up here. Let's see. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. We're hooking up with our brother, Mr. Craig Campbell, as we speak on the Zoom machine. Uh, I see his name. It says, Craig is connecting to audio. I believe Craig's been connected to audio uh, for a while. I don't don't know if that's the right caption they need to use down there. Maybe this specific one. Might have to – there he is. He's sideways. Might have to flip you on the – I have to flip you the other way. Well, damn it, I did. Sorry, yeah. sorry, buddy. There you there go. You go. Well, there he then, is. What about? There we go. The full effect. Well, uh, <laughs> there we go. Hell yeah! What's happening? Hey, brother, how are you, man? Man, I'm doing so buddy? good. Hey, man. Good to see well, you. Well, kind of. I mean, you know. Welcome, good, good. Craig. Craig Campbell, by God, to the podcast. By Here he God. is. God. <laughs> I see what you what's, did. What's going on, man? You you've been uh you've been slammed? Man, I've been uh not with music stuff. I mean I'm I'm doing uh I'm doing as much as I uh as as they're throwing at me with the music, but I mean I me and my wife about a year ago we bought a building and we're we've been uh in the process of building a coffee shop and and uh we're uh opening next week so it's a big it's been we've been slammed just trying to get that thing ready to go yeah yeah i that jr sent me the um the link to an article about it and i was reading it and we were both talking about it. we're like man what a cool idea and great idea i i um just so you know my wife and i along with another couple friend of ours this was maybe I don't know what three four years ago jr five years ago my wife always wanted to open a uh, a children's boutique and i kept going "Eh, i thought it was just a phase like like, well do we really want to deal with that Uh, you know whatever and 
she kept on and kept on so we kind of did the same thing we bought an old historic building in this little downtown area near um where we live which is about 50 miles south of little rock for some perspective for you yeah and and man i remember all the work that went into that uh you know we had to restore the building and the, you know this whole thing but it, I, I read where you guys kind of said it was a labor of, of love for y'all and that's kind of the way this was not necessarily for me but for my wife and so point being i i, I mentioned you being slam busy because i remember being incredibly busy doing that with you Man. know music stuff obviously but but um it, it's amazing what all goes into opening a brand new business yeah, and, and you know we we bought as same we did the same thing. We bought this old building. Half of it was built in the 1800s, and then there was an extension, which is where our coffee shop is, that was built in the 30s. Um, and whoever had it before us, obviously, it's passed down uh, in a few different hands uh, over the generations. Um, they didn't, you know, they didn't plan ahead. They didn't. Uh, so when we started peeling some layers back, it was it was in a terrible shape. Um, a lot of the floor was just completely rotten and, and some of the walls, but, uh, so yeah, we, we did that same thing. We stripped it down to absolutely nothing down to the, to the bare walls, bare support, all the electrical out of it, all the plumbing came out of it and just started from scratch. But it's literally taken mm -hmm. a solid year to get from the time we took possession of the building to, uh, finally getting to open, uh, next week. Yeah, that's got to be exciting. So are you a handyman? Like, can you do that stuff by yourself? Because I'm I not. Do, I, can, I, I can do demo work. Like, I can I can tear well, stuff up for you and haul yeah. it off, but I can't build it back. No, it's, you know, I man, when I first moved to Nashville, that's, that was my gig. I was, a, I was, when I first graduated high school, I, I went in, I was a correctional officer. And then I did that for a couple of years. And then I put a band together and, and did that for a couple of years. And then when I moved here, a buddy of mine said, Hey man, if you will, uh, if I can get you a job, would you, would you want to move to Nashville and be my roommate? I said, hell yeah, dude, let's go. And, um, where'd you grow up? <clears throat> South Georgia. Okay. Lyons, and Georgia. Lyons, Georgia. There used to be some uh, old honky tonk out there. We used to play back in the day for like a week straight. They put us up in this band trailer. I mean, I, purposely forgot most of those memories but oh i've been to Lyons, georgia kerrigan's yes oh my god I, yeah that was when i said you know when i when i quit the prison um i put the band together we were the house band there for like two and a half years oh, oh wow. my gosh for, fortunately though we lived there we we didn't have to stay at that band house, <laughs> but that that thing was <laughs> sketchy man that i thing was gonna was say as, as a correction <laughs> officer you probably met half the people that were hanging out over there uh, at both places yeah man, right. you ain't kidding dude but yeah he got he my buddy called said i'll get you a job and it was a, i was a maintenance man at an apartment complex uh and a lot of that stuff you know i didn't know how to do but i was so motivated to move to nashville i told the lady hiring me i told her straight up i said i don't know how to do any of this stuff I said, but I am a quick learner. Uh, so I learned a lot on the job with that. But, you know, we remodeled a house. Uh, actually, I built a house not far from here. And then we remodeled this one we live in. And I just I learned a lot just by YouTube and, and trying to save a little bit of money. And lots of times when you're trying to save money, you end up costing more money. If, if you had somebody <laughs> do, it, do it professional. So. I, so to answer your question, handyman, a little bit, but not. I mean, I don't. I don't claim to be. Right. Well, you guys must. Well, you guys must like coffee, and uh, that's what we were saying. We're like, you know, anybody can open a bar, and you got. But th there's times and clientele and all that stuff, and, and inventory and all that. And I thought coffee shop, perfect, and, and a great name too, the Grindstone Cowboy. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And, and, and just you know because. Everybody drinks coffee. I mean, just about. I mean, probably 90% of America drinks coffee. Uh, you're in rural Tennessee, but you're on, right on the outskirts, uh, not on the outskirts of heaven, but you're on the outskirts of Nashville. Uh, I'm going to quit doing that, I promise. Um, but <laughs> He's on a roll. Yeah, I know, he right? He's on a roll. I love it. Watch out. <laughs> 
Uh, but you're down in Eagleville, which is Triune, south of Nolensville. That's South Nashville, out on 840 <laughs> Loop, out there. Beautiful country. I'm talking about that, just that beautiful country rolling. Out there is really, really pretty. I mean, uh, a lot of people remember uh, what was the Blake Shelton video he recorded driving the truck out to, out on 840 there, uh, some beach. That was all that rolling green hills there. That's how beautiful that Triune area is. So Eagleville's <laughs> a short hop from Nashville, and all that area has grown so much. I mean, you're probably in a honey hole for people needing something like that because i'm sure there wasn't anywhere else to go get coffee within driving distance from your house unless you went to town town or something no and, and you know that's that was part of our business plan we we uh, we we lived here in eagleville since 05 i'll tell you a quick story i was i was out on the road playing piano for tracy bird and my wife calls me and she said uh hey uh i found us a house i said okay cool she said i put an offer in i said cool and then she said and they accepted it. And I said, <laughs> well, I, I mean, <laughs> baby, if you're happy, I'm happy. Shit. Yeah. Um, but, we, but we, you know, we've been out here since 2005, and, and it's home now. It's where my babies were born. Uh, but when, when the idea came about opening a coffee shop, I just, I actually came up with the name first. And then just roundabout, just I started thinking about, well, what, what does it take to open a, a coffee shop? And I also wanted to be a music venue. And okay, I uh, gotta interrupt. I gotta interrupt you for just a second, because the first thing I thought of was uh, Rhinestone Cowboy. Obviously, that that had to be part of it, right? Well, or that yeah, had to be in yeah, your that, mind, right? Yeah, that's that's okay. where we're, we're the play is just the rhyme scheme, and there's another part right, of that right, story right. that that I could tell you guys, and I don't know if we should say it on air, but it was uh, <laughs> the guy that I just put. It, I'll give you the the summary of it the guy that wrote rhinestone cowboy reached out to me and he is not he he's very nasty he's a nasty oh. guy oh yeah. Wow. really oh yeah he he's yeah that's another whole another so oh, he's really? not thrilled he's not thrilled huh no not at all wow Huh. Yeah. Well, so so does he have all the? Uh, say, oh, well, anyway, I say I'm buddies with we're, we know Glenn's son. Um, if we can make that connection to easy month that well, helps or anything. Well, you know, and honestly, when he reached out to me, I thought I'm thinking, man, he, you know, he might want to collaborate and change the change the words a little bit to maybe write us a jingle for, for, for Grindstone Cowboy. But yeah. no. Wow. wow. Yeah, you you think a nice little hit a pub for it after yeah, all these years? Yeah, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, with somebody like you, I mean, it's not like it's some Joe. You know, I mean, I'm like, hey, and for I, folks I out there listening, I mean, this is boring stuff, but you can't. I mean, you can't even copyright a title. Not that it's even the same <laughs> word because it's not. But I mean, it's it. Like we could go write. Craig and I could get together and write a song called Rhinestone Cowboy, and as long as it don't sound like Rhinestone Cowboy, it'd be fine. So absolutely. I, which makes it his, his, I guess, uh, angst towards it even more ridiculous. But that needed yeah, to be there. And I, and you know, honestly, I got I got I kept all of our emails. But that was my final email to him. Was like, you know what? I hate that you feel this way. Uh, but the 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 good thing is, is I don't me opening my coffee shop and calling it Grindstone Cowboy doesn't depend on you uh, approving. So right. You know that kind of stuff. So, anyways, yeah. and in my and in uh, your heart, you know, Glenn would be cool with it, and it's it I, makes sense. I think it, so. And I know. Coincident, coincidentally, I mean, yeah, we, me and Glenn share the same last name, and I, but I told the guy because he even brought that up. I said, "Okay, I'm sorry, my dad gave me this name. I mean, what are you, what are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Well, I'm, I'm, sorry, hey, I'm glad I brought it up. That's awesome. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. That but, was just uh, the first thing I it popped in my head. But you know, yeah. But, so, which to me is yeah, brilliant marketing. I think I thought it would have been awesome, and I actually I got excited when they said, you know, hey, Larry wants to uh, wants, wants to reach out to you. Can I give him your email? I said, sure. So, yeah, it was. It was wow. nasty. Yeah, that's wow. why. Because I'm thinking, I mean, what a better per I mean, a, a good family man from the South, real country, a big Glen Campbell fan. Obviously, same night. I mean, no brainer. And give them some pub after all these years of songs. Nobody's cutting it. You right. Know? Right. No, yeah. he didn't want none of that. Yeah, that's anyway. fine. Uh, well, don't grow anyway, up and be bitter I, songwriters listening yeah. to this. Don't grow up and be old and bitter one day. Always be cool. I didn't mean to Here throw you off your, your no, but, story off course, but. But and now, you know, what's, the, what's even uh, a little you know, something that's, that's happening just because now that he was so ugly to me, I'm, I'm trying my best to do everything I can to disassociate 
with the whole rhinestone because people will bring it up all right. the time and i'm like nope not at all yeah yeah um mm. but you know going back to the just the, the the whole coffee shop thing we 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 lived here in eagleville and and, and I, I love coffee but i realized there was um uh, there was not a drive through coffee shop within 20, 25 minutes of any direction of, of Eagleville. And um, the traffic that goes through Eagleville, they um, they did a census, was like 10,000 cars a day. So wow. I thought, man, if I could catch 1% or 2% of those cars to come through my drive through we'd be doing all right. Yep. Yeah. And it's a it's a lot more than a, it's going to be a lot more than a coffee place. Uh, you kind you kind of mentioned that uh, it's going to be a a venue. Um, mm-hmm. It's it, you, you correct me if I'm wrong. You guys are going to have some food. Yeah, we got a small menu. Uh, we posted it the other day. You know, soups and sandwiches and salads and pastries. We got a, a lady that's going to be baking all of our stuff fresh. Um, cocktails yeah. yeah we are def- definitely gonna have some cocktails um we went to a place in kansas city called uh hand and glove and all they sold was coffee cocktails and it was packed and we were, we were wow. thinking wait a minute so you can come and get some coffee and have throw a little splash of bourbon in there too at the uh right. brownstone cowboy that's a cool yeah. idea so so what do you um what are the plans as far as the venue aspect of it? Um, you talking like well, rider rounds? You talking full full production band shows or all of the above? No, it's not full band. It's a small stage. It's <laughs> going to be all, all acoustic stuff, very bluebird ish. You know, right. people when you when you buy a ticket to this thing, you're going to come in and it's it's going to be known that you're going to sit down. You're going to keep it quiet. Um, but I got three. I got my first three shows booked. Um, I got in June. I got Kane and Smith. Um, in uh, July, I got Thompson Square, and then August, I got Mo Pitney. So uh, that's awesome. We're, we're yes. Trying to do trying to do some <clears throat> some nice ticketed events where you know not only do people that uh, that are going to come and get the tickets, they're going to enjoy the show. I also want to make it a, a good experience for the for the singers and the songwriters too. You know, so that they'll want to come play. Right. right. Yeah, certainly yeah, you know that bed. that perspective. I mean, as far as being an artist and and the play, you know, a lot of times, let's say an artist out outgrows a venue or they're trying to play this certain type of show or whatever. You'll go back to places that maybe you have outgrown or or even though you're doing this type of tour, this venue may not fit it, but the experience was such a good one that you'll go back over and over oh, and yeah. over i'm sure you have those you know you probably could come up with five or six off the top of your head like i could right now and then you also more so remember those places that regardless of what they paid you or whatever i ain't never going back there <laughs> right. you, know, you know absolutely so. absolutely you could pay me all the money in the world <laughs> I mean, yeah but 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 they've got yeah but but i want to be i want to be that place where you know word spreads that you know yeah go, y'all need to if if they call you, you should do it, man. It's really fun. They take care of you, um, and it's it's the the audience is very respectful. Um, I want to eventually have that legacy of of the the audience, kind of like the Bluebird, kind of like the listening room, where it's just a given. You come in and you sit down and you you enjoy the music, and uh, that's what this place is going to be. Um, but yeah, I got I got shoot, man. I got I could l- rattle off five or six places where i didn't get paid hardly anything but yeah. they treated me so good that i'm like hey <laughs> i'll go back i'll go back anytime right yeah and maybe treated you really well in the early days or something early in your career i know for yeah. me and when i couldn't get squat anywhere else and this place would give you a few extra grand or a back end or whatever you know stuff like that and so yeah we I've always, that's always <clears throat> been uh, something I've been cognizant of over the years is trying to, you know, return the favors to people who were good to us. And, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah you that, mentioned, that, sorry, well, Joe, I was, well, was going to say, and that goes for everybody too, you know, because the experience you have there, if, and, you know, if, 
so if they're really good to say me and the production mm-hmm. team or the us and we're going to be more like yeah we should go do that if they're, or if they're not they're like man you sure we want to do that again you know i always think of like yeah. if everybody could right. take care of you like uh like ed warm and him do at joe's on weed street in chicago right yeah if everybody yeah. could just I mean, be everybody they don't have a bunch of space but they make do they give you what they can they take care of you you know if everybody could just run like ed does his stuff we'd be in good shape yeah i mean ed and, and then uh, uh uh sean at dusty armadillo and then, and yep. then yep. even like um uh, stonies it's just there, there's a handful of these places where it's just like you know my rider my rider my full band rider top to bottom is probably four hundred dollars Right. right and when when a venue goes in and starts scratching shit off i'm like come on yeah. man yeah and you're it's, not talking about you're not talking about crazy stuff you're talking about jars of salsa yeah, and, and a box, so, cases yeah, of water so yeah yeah and a, you're like what a case of, you know a, a, a <laughs> yeah. 12 pack of miller light or, something, <laughs> or yeah or no or or now that now no we don't have we don't provide a runner or no we don't we're not uh we're gonna give you a buyout a good luck for food you know uh it's like yeah. we're we're coming in here we don't have personal vehicles we don't we're, y'all ask us to come here <laughs> yeah it's crazy. it's crazy so, so but, yeah. are you out touring at all right now yeah are you- i just wrapped up uh the first little segment of my I put, you know, we did this little series of shows uh, based around my my song I released a couple months ago, By God, and then uh, yeah. we're gonna Just be adding great, some by the dates. Way. Thank you, man. We're gonna we're gonna be adding some dates um, to it. I mean, outside of what we already have on the books, we got a few things. Um, man, I, I don't know about y'all, but I, and I'm, I'm sure you you guys you um, aren't as in the you know as far as hard tickets are concerned but i'm having i'm just you know overall some of these clubs they're 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 hesitant on locking me down for a, a, an x amount of you know a next you know a, a contract because of the way things are people are still kind of not showing up yeah even though you know i'll have i've had consistently just in the last 18 months of 25 percent of my pre-sales not showing up <laughs> Right, we, yeah, yeah just, we've we've dealt with that too. It yeah, just the don't drop make sense. count. Yeah, people are yeah. buying them and drop count, and then they just not showing up. Yeah, so it's it's strange. I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping we're on the the upwards trend on this kind of stuff. But, um, I'm my booking agent. They're sending me shows inside of ninety days here lately. Like they're yeah. just sending me, they just say, hey, we got a show. It's in sixty days. Can you do it? I'm like, yep. Yeah, you got my yep. calendar. Let's go. Yeah, yep. we haven't, man. Uh, to your to your point, I don't. What have what have we played this year? Six, eight shows, maybe. Yeah, maybe eight. Which shows Which is total. Ca- kind of rare for us. I mean, really, we we've, we've probably at twice that, if if not more, by now. But um, and as far as the tickets and stuff you're talking about, we're we're just getting ready to kick off our tour. Uh, tour tour i guess you want to call it right um yeah we've been doing spot dates here and there but um here this weekend so we'll see fingers crossed but you know I, yeah I, we'll jr and i'll be talking about it at shows you when you talk about people not showing up and you know say we were somewhere and he tells me that day i you know, you know we sold i don't know 3500 tickets or whatever it is and you go out there and i'm like that is not 3,500 people. I promise <laughs> not, you. Like I've done yeah. this long enough now. I can kind of get a pretty good, you know, count in my head like you can, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild, you know? Yeah, it is. It, it, it is really strange. Is. <clears throat> yeah, and but, thing, you know, then we have on the flip side of that, we'll have a terrible pre-sale number, but then you'll have a walk up of like, and, and the room is packed. It's just, uh, yeah. right. It's strange. Yeah, it, it, it still you, depends too on where you go. You know, there there are obviously places that you know, like where I live and where Jr. lives, and even I'm sure there in Eagleville. I mean, you know, if you were to play somewhere there, people are over it. They don't care. They're not concerned. You know, but sure. you, you know, we're I know we're going out to California here in the next month, and who knows out there? And just for example. Mm-hmm. so right yeah last time we were out there it was like that you know one night where we sold half the tickets we had done three years before that 
and then the next night we go somewhere and oversell somewhere we've never played and it's packed and then and and, and then we i was telling people that you know the drop count was a, the percentages were across the board were like 60 percent of people actually showing up and that was every promoter i was talking to and and it would happen like you were saying, Craig, it would be one night you don't know, and then the next night we go to some, you know, county fair somewhere that's supposed to be three or four thousand people. There's eight thousand people there. You know, <laughs> right. it's like what yeah. what, ha- what happened yesterday? You know, so yeah. it, it. But hopefully we're we're getting over Man, that. I, I know you, money's you, tight, and you know, but this we were talking right before you jumped <laughs> on. We got the mask mandate gone, so maybe that'll ease everybody's travel a little. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I, you know, I feel like uh, the 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 mask mandate being lifted, I think, will help out a little bit. I, I'm, I true. I do believe that. Yeah, if nothing else, just just people's perception. You know, yeah. I mean, it just visually not having to see it. You know, it can ease people's minds. It's as silly as that is, but uh, yeah, I've, I've said from I've said it for a long time, man. The whole mask thing is is you know it it puts people in bad <laughs> moods. Whether whether it's the person that doesn't want to wear it, having to. Always, always be on defense. That's the way I feel. You know, when I'm right. walking around and I don't have one on, I'm in my mind. I'm daring somebody <laughs> to say something to me. Right. Please, please say something to me. So I'm always on that edge. And then there's people that do believe in the in wearing them, and and so they're and they're mad at us for not. You know, it's just everybody's got a reason to be upset about it. But man, I just hope now that the travel <laughs> mandates for masks are gone, it'll it'll ease up a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so the, what, when you get back on the road, you mentioned you, you'll start back, but I, 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 I missed when you said, or you just kind of oh, well, ain't, I mean, ain't stopped. Well, yeah, we're not really stopped. It's just like, you know, shows weekend warrior stuff right now. Like Saturday, I got to play in a mud park down here in Mississippi. Uh, and then Sunday I'll be in Boston doing a, doing a, uh, an acoustic festival throughout the whole town of Boston or city of Boston. Uh, and then yeah, just hit weekend stuff here and there. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I don't know, man, if it's getting older or having done this for the the length of time I have now. Um, it, you mentioned hard tickets, um, and so I've got to where, man, I like those soft ticket shows. You better <laughs> lot, believe it. Lot, lot less pressure, man. If if uh, if it don't sell well or whatever, you still get your, pay, your paycheck, <laughs> and you yeah. can blame it on. Uh, the promoter didn't do their job or the festival <laughs> people All or what, day. whether it's All right day. or wrong. <laughs> so yeah. I don't, I don't know, but, um, but yeah, man, so you've, uh, I've done this now on the road for 15 years and you've done it a lot longer or at least longer. I don't know how much longer than me, because you mentioned earlier, you were, you were a, a road musician before the artist thing. Um, I don't, I think so, people yeah. would, I, I don't want to say surprise because if they've seen you play your shows, you obviously get a great idea of it. But p- where I'm going with that is Craig is an incredible musician, not only singer, but actual great musician where the rest of us just kind of pretend, except for Paisley and <laughs> Keith Urban. The rest of us just kind of stand up there and pretend like George Strait, you know. <laughs> it's like, But Craig can actually play, but. Well, I mean, you know, I, I yes, <laughs> piano, piano is my first instrument. I, I moved, uh, I moved to Nashville, and that's kind of how I kind of got my foot in the door with, with because all I wanted to do was was make money, playing music, like or not make, say make money, pay my bills. Right. right yeah. Um, Earn so a living playing music in, in Nashville. That's what I wanted to yeah. do, and so that's how I kind of just introduced myself to everybody. Was you know I'm a, I'm a piano player. You know, if y'all need one, holler at me. Um, so I, I was friends. We had some mutual friends with Luke Bryan <laughs> early on, um, and Luke needed a piano player. So I met. I, I went out and played for Luke for a little while, and then he was like, "Hey, wait, you know what?" He said, "When was that, Craig?" And I asked for a reason. Tra- yeah, it was before Tracy. So I think some like oh four. Okay. Ish. Because I, I moved that, to town in O two, and I I met Luke and knew Luke. Oh, probably, I don't know, O four, five, six, and then we played some shows together in like O seven, O eight, 
something. So yeah. I didn't know if you would you wouldn't have still been with him. I don't guess that long. No, man. I, when I, when I say I played for Luke, it was a very short stint. I mean, probably a half a dozen shows. Um, it was before he had his record deal, so we would just go down and do some some southeast Georgia shows at yeah. some of these college towns. Um, but Luke, I say this with a smile. You know, he he fired me in a in a way of like you need to be doing your own thing. You don't need to be nobody's side man. Uh, so he said, but I'm gonna help you. And he did. He introduced me to a lot of people. And, and then I got the Tracy bird gig, uh, in 2005 and I played with him for about 18 months. Then that's when I really started focusing on like, you know what? I, I, I think this is what I want to do now. I want to, not only do I want to make a living playing music. I, I mean, I want to, I, it, it really got into me whenever I, I was playing piano for these guys and we would drive up and, you know, they'd play these sold out shows and their name was on the marquee and people were singing along to songs that weren't on the radio. And I'm like, what in the hell is going on here? Right. Uh, I want to do that. So that's when my pursuit of, of getting a record deal kind of started was, was in that 2005, 2006 but you grew up but you grew up singing and playing in church i mean as yeah. a teenager and stuff right yeah yeah that's you know that's where it all a lot a lot of us got our got our feet wet with music you know and in church i played piano for my church for a long time i, I sang specials with my mama uh, mm-hmm. a lot you know and i remember being a kid <laughs> and hearing her sing harmony and, and not really understanding what that was but it sounded cool um and so yeah it was it that's where it all began yeah that was my first experience as you know singing in front of people was specials is what we called them too and that's because my parents made me quite honestly (laughs) you know like all right it's time for you to sing a special again plus when you grow up in town 300 (laughs) people man you can imagine there's not a whole lot of us that sing on key so you guess who gets all the the solos and the christmas and the easter and everything <laughs> so dude i hey i'm with you i like i'm i was known as the uh the uh beauty pageant singer like i, I every every beauty pageant in, in my hometown <laughs> or surrounding counties oh you know call up old craig he he'll do it you know and, and yeah sang at a couple of weddings too so yeah it was uh i was i was the the small town go-to guy well you said so you said you always wanted to to earn a living playing music um that didn't start for me until i was like i don't know 17 18 uh years old so for you was Same. it so did you play sports or anything like that growing up or was it all music yeah i mean i lived so far out of town man and we didn't my, my mom and my stepdad both had eight to five jobs and so getting me back and forth to practice was just was never in the Tough. in the cards for me so you know, it was either outdoors, hunting and fishing and riding four wheelers or, or it was sitting down at the piano. That was my yeah. That was my extracurricular after school activities. Got it. That Got piano it. probably kept you out of more trouble than the four wheeler did. For, for sure it did. Yeah, yeah. I always sure said that. Did. I always said Early that. Early on, and then when you got that record deal, like me, it probably got you into a little bit yeah, of trouble. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It did. No, I didn't yeah, tell you that I'm – I remember that moment. I remember that moment when when girls when girls reacted to singing and playing the way they do uh, when I was in like junior high, and I and they you know when girls would ask you to sing, I was like, well, why do you want me to sing? Right, you know, and uh, and then and then you know being on the phone with them and and them so, you know sing me a little song, you know, and then you doing it over the phone and like this. What's going on with this? You know, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, it was all, it was all, I knew. I, and plus music was all I was, I thought I was any good at. So um, I just tried to, I said, surely there's a way to make a living doing this. Yeah, for sure. So you still writing a lot? I am. Uh, we, I don't write a lot because I just feel like, you know, the whole writing songs to be writing songs is just, I don't, I'm not, my time is, Time is valuable right now, uh, whether it be with this coffee shop or the girls and their volleyball and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I focus, I'm very, very hyper-focused on 
who I write with, what kind of songs we're writing. Um, but, and so what that means is I don't write like every day. I write once or twice a week. Um, but it's fun. And, and like I said, those are, I've figured out a way to, to make sure that we do write quality songs on those days. Yeah, that's kind of, that kind of sounds like the way I, I operate. I've never been a ride at 10, 10 o'clock every day. Uh, can y'all hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Craig's frozen on my end. You're not frozen. Am I frozen to you? No, I got you. Can you hear us, Craig? We can see. It's all good if you bounce back. This happens all the time here on the Justin Moore Podcast. There he is. Oh, we got to do our thing again. Hold on. It's all good, brother. <laughs> this this podcast was uh, built on uh, technical difficulties amongst rednecks, so this is par for the course. Yeah. No, I was saying, Craig, that, that kind of is the way that I, I've always been. I, I You know, early on before I got a record deal, when I got paid, ju- when I just had a publishing deal, I mean, I had to write a lot. But um, – I've always been one of those guys that kind of writes for projects. And like you said, yeah, I get the certain three, four guys or whatever that I really enjoy and think that I click the best with and, and write that way. And I've never really, I mean, I've had some outside cuts, but it was just kind of by default. It wasn't really by design. Um, so I, I've always just kind of written, tried to write for myself and, and for specific type projects and and so um anyway that's the way i i do it so i under, i totally understand what you wh- yeah you're coming from there i was you know when, when early on when i signed my first record deal uh it was a it was an all-inclusive record deal you know people they'll say oh you had a 360 deal i was like well this was like a 360 <laughs> deal on steroids uh, what year was this, that I signed with Bigger Picture in uh, 2010. Okay. And then Family Man came out that that winter, and then so and then it was it charted in 2011. Got it. Um, so essentially, every song that I wrote was put on hold immediately. Like my right. my people just went ahead and put it on hold. And nobody could pitch it or nothing. Um, and then that label just closed i was working on my third album and um when that record label closed that was with steagall wasn't it yeah yeah that was steagall and michael powers and and those guys Um, steagall gave me my first publishing deal paid me 12 grand a year to write write songs (laughs) living high on the hog too (laughs) yeah baby yeah man but i was shit Uh, man i was golly I don't know. I was 21 or something at the time. I was young, you know, yeah. and so I thought, man, this I can tell people I'm a published songwriter. I, I still got to have another job because <laughs> 12 grand ain't going to get it done. But, <laughs> that's right. But anyway. Uh, but again, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that that's part of your story. And and who knows if that wouldn't have happened, who, where would you, where would you be? You know, that, yeah, that, that's how I look at it. Um, <clears throat> Steve all saw something. He saw, he saw how badass you were, even way back well, then. So kind of you to say. But um, <clears throat> so my first cut, like actual cut outside cut from a, another artist, was by accident. You know that that song got pitched to to Garth, and Garth cut it, and um, he put it on his Man Against Machine record. But it wasn't like had had my record deal. Been still been intact, we would have put that mm-hmm. album out, and then he wouldn't have been able to. That song wouldn't have got pitched to him. Right. So there's, you know, no telling how many songs I could have had cut if people would have known they were available. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll wait. Right. I was telling Justin before we jumped on with you. I was <laughs> listening to some of your stuff this morning as I was getting my stuff set up, and I was like, Craig is, does a great job at picking songs. And I guess you write, you wrote. <sighs> I was at answer. You wrote most of all of your material that you've put out for the masses. And, uh, yeah, man, you do a great job picking songs to put out. Like, I was thinking, like, by God, I mean, what a – because you ride the line, you get the message across, but because you, you're a family man Christian, but you still come from the outlaw roots and the country ways. Right. I mean, I, I love clever – I told Justin, I was like, yeah, it just it's perfect. It's southern rock country right now. It's just good old – what I good old guy who grew up in Georgia singing at the church. Uh, 
song would sound like and i, I was wondering if that you had wrote that uh, yeah i wrote i wrote by god with thomas archer and, and uh jordan walker and he, you know they jordan had that idea and i say by god all the time mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. part of my my vocabulary and as soon as he said it i was like yeah let's go with this <laughs> Uh, and we did it on a Zoom call just like this, which was kind of weird, but um, yeah. it, it worked out. And, and I just started playing it out live. You know how it goes. And, and people reacting in, in the way they were reacting. I said, you know, I said, it's probably worth paying attention and cutting this thing and, and just <laughs> doing something with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, great two two great young songwriters there. Uh, Archer, um, man, he I've known him. He was a, <laughs> like first day he moved to town, and boy, he's. He's doing well, but that's uh, but that, Man, that makes that's, yeah. that's fitting. Some Georgia boys getting together, writing good quality country songs. I mean, that's what we need more of, people. I, yeah. I said that about Outskirts of Heaven. I mean, next to maybe Riley Green's uh, Grandpa's uh, Grandpa's Never Die, those two right there just blow my mind. How those weren't just big old number ones. I mean, Outskirts to yeah, Heaven well. is is there's no way that shouldn't have been a number one. I'm, I'll die on that hill. So uh, so, but uh, another another gym. As usual, I love Craig it. ain't put yeah. one out that shouldn't have been. Quite that's honestly. what I'm saying. We could, I know. We could get yeah, on that. Me, yeah, we could get on that, on that. Uh, man. Uh, we, uh, soapbox I, and go for a while. Yeah, <laughs> Both could, of us, I'm could. sure. I tell, I tell people all the time, man. I got, I got a, a Justin Moore story. We, we, uh, because it, it never fails. You know, when the CMAs roll around or the ACMs roll around, they'll say, Are "You going to the show?" Yeah. And I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I said, first of all, it's crazy expensive. I said, you know, you know, not only a lot of people don't know you have to buy your tickets, right? And if you if you take a date, your your wife, you know, it's, that's two tickets, and then and we're talking gotta, about for the per, I want to make sure people understand this who are listening and watching this. We're talking about like us, like we have to buy our tickets, yeah, not yeah, just 100%. like a fan to go to the show. Like they'll want you to go to the show, but you have to purchase your tickets. <laughs> Yeah. as yeah. an artist and, and everybody yeah. does even the, the the people on the front row their their label or some or their management somebody bought those tickets for them i mean somebody yeah. there's a there's an invoice somewhere and then you're looking at however much your wife wants to spend on a dress and that she'll only wear that one time yep uh, and then it's just the 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 <laughs> without getting too crazy i'm just you know the the, the whole politics of the whole show yeah uh and I, but I remember you, me and you. I was actually me, me and my wife. Something happened at a at a show, and I was like, "I'm ready to go. We got to get. <laughs> I mean, I can't take this shit no more." <laughs> so uh, we head to the elevator, and then we meet you and your wife at the elevator. Yeah. And we were talking about how you know just being a little a little frustrated, but not. I wouldn't say mad, but just. Uh, and I talked about, you know the how my my brain was working and then you were like dude i've had like six number ones in a row and i can't get arrested at this place and I, that, just, <laughs> that hit me hard man i was like you know what i'm I'm over here being frustrated and i haven't even had like real radio success like guys like you and, and like lee bryce and people that have had like dirks you should you never see dirks on being nominated yeah. hardly for anything yeah billy current to any of those guys so i was like yeah. man i'm I can't complain. Well, I hope I to goodness that did not come across as as boasting about that. It was it was no, so no, not at all. I just relating to to you, yeah. Um, and I know you and I, we've been we've probably sat next to each other. We've been we we've had a lot of these conversations over the years with our wives sitting there going, "Here they go again." <laughs> at the, but I don't know if you happen to have heard it, but when the ACMs were on i guess i don't know a month ago or whatever they were i kind of went on a little rant on here and it's not to knock anybody who are a part of the show oh yeah but (laughs) it's just like you mentioned i mean the billy currington's i mean chris young's the uh I mean, you could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I mean, I Any, anybody anybody with a cowboy hat and, and real cowboy boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's so it's crazy. It it, you, it it's a little odd, but it is what it is. And I've just learned to man, and I don't know if you've gotten to this point. Uh, it feels as though you have just having this conversation, but it used to drive me up a wall, and I used to worry about it and get 
pissed off about it and you know and i I just finally got to a point i'm like dude all you can control is all you can control i mean there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing, nothing. i you know and i i said you're just you're just getting yourself all worked up for for no reason because it's not going to change and or maybe it will one day but it ain't going to be because you sit here and get pissed off about it and right and so um and and to your point too i i learned too and i think this is a part of just getting older maybe is i'm like dude you really got it pretty good if you think about it you know right <laughs> you 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 get to go to your earlier point you get to play music for a living you get to go there in a tour bus you know are we selling out stadiums no but what are, what are eight people uh, on earth right now who do that you know and so right, like right. it kind of, i kind of learned uh, to have a different perspective and a, a thankful perspective for what i have been provided rather than and for a long time i was just i was concerned about what i didn't have and 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 so that's kind of helped me wade through the bs and and continue to navigate those waters oh yeah same here man like i'm i'm um <clears throat> as of late just really adopted the whole prayer of serenity of just you know controlling things you can being okay with the things you can't and just no being able to, <laughs> to know which is which and uh but you know a guy put it into super perspective for me the other day i say the other day it's been years so ago because uh it's just again just a confidant situation where i was just kind of venting if you will right and he said man look he said i guarantee you that no matter what level you are on you are always mm -hmm. frustrated as to why you can't get to whatever's next he said yeah, that's I promise a great you this. point he said i promise you luke Bryan is sitting at the house right now wondering why he can't get whatever he's trying to get to even though you you know us on the outside looking in <laughs> he's at the top of the game there's something he wants that he can't get. Uh, wow. Or he's, or he's, you know, hasn't gotten it yet kind of thing. Yeah, that's and great it, perspective. Yeah, it, and it, well, it kind of op opened my eyes a little bit when it comes to stuff like that. But like you said, I'm, man, I'm super blessed. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, I can't, I can't complain about it. Yeah. How old are your uh, girls now? Presley just turned 14. Kenny Rose is 11. So I've got 12, 10, 7, and 4. Good Lord. So how much worse is 14 than 12? Because 12 is kicking my tail right now. 12, I think she was – obviously she was the, she's the second kid, so I think she's just a little bit of difference. When she loves you, she loves you. But yeah. she is – Oh man, she she makes me want to cuss. <laughs> my, my my oldest, my oldest <laughs> is the sweetest, most tender hearted, no talk back. If you look at her the wrong way, she's gonna bust into tears. But my my Kenny Rose buddy, she 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 will you tell say you to Kennedy? go. She would, Kenny Kennedy Rose. Rose? Kenny oh, Rose. Kenny. Okay, I was say I've got yeah. a Kennedy. That's why I, I couldn't. I didn't know if you said Kennedy or. Kennedy. My daddy's name. My daddy's name was Kenny. So we just we named her Kenny, but feminized spelling it a little bit. Right. Yeah. No. That's that's. I I, I didn't know uh, dealing with a teenager if it because right now I, I tell you, my oldest is the twelve year old. So she, she's not as bad to me, but her and her mother, I swear, man. I don't know if you have this at your house, but I mean, it's daily, multiple times daily that I have to literally get into the middle of them because I think my wife and her are about to fist fight. And I don't know that my 12 year old wouldn't take her. So I'm like, y'all better <laughs> calm down now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's just. No, uh, my, 14, my 14 year old, yeah, it's getting a little weird. Uh, she's got a, a little boyfriend. Um, uh, I. They were upstairs, like in our little loft. <laughs> but Kenny was up there with them, so I really didn't think too much about it. But it got really quiet, so I, I kind of tiptoed up there and I, I caught them making out, and, uh, uh, and I got, you know, I, I don't know how to handle that. And, I, and and I didn't speak, I didn't speak to Presley for about three days. Like I, 
I just, I was mad at her, disappointed. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, I don't know. Well, should I be? I don't know. But but finally, I had a talk with her. I said, baby, I don't know how to do this. I don't. I've, I've never had a teenage daughter before. Right. I said, so I, I'm I'm I may handle this the wrong way. I said, but you got to give me. You got to be patient with me. Um. And so she's like I said, she's my sweet sweetheart. Her and her mama, they're they're super tight. But Kenny, yeah, same. Her and her mama, but like I said, she loves loves, and when she loves, she loves hard. But she'll also tell you to suck it, you know, in, <laughs> in, in so many words. That's funny. Oh, yeah, buddy, funny. I can't wait till well, I get I may the have call to call that. you for advice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, here to I can't wait to get the text or call from Moore saying he called Ella make it out with somebody. Oh, my, gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> well, there's certain ones of mine that I would expect it, and there's certain ones that I, I would be stunned by it. But, but if I've got, a, I've got one in particular, you know which one I'm talking about that – won't nothing surprise me out of her. Well, I'm going to tell you, hey, I'll tell you this. It'll probably be the opposite. Whatever you oh, think. Really? Yeah. Happen, yeah. Like, I'd have never thought that would have been Preston. Right. Well, great. Now I got to worry about all of them. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Those little, it's like your allergies change. Your person, when you're young like that, your hormones, everything, you change a lot through those four or five years till you get supposed to be an adult i'm i mean yeah. i'm at the point where i'm still dealing with with getting boobs here and i'm like oh this is weird this is no really it is weird. that is super weird <laughs> like, when, like whenever uh and and you know it's just things things and and it's sad it's sad that they that things do change in that way of of you know just th- them having friends over it's like i mean you know i'm i'm a second guess should i walk out in a pair of shorts or should i should i put a shirt on i mean you know just right. stuff like that but it it is what it is and I, I hate that my girls are growing up but it can't stop it yeah, yeah. beats the and alternative least, though yeah that's yeah. what i was gonna you know, say you, you kind of yeah you kind of got to say uh you know it's kind of it's kind of a bummer to watch things change but it's a good thing that you're around long enough to see things change kind of deal you For know sure. yeah no there. doubt so that's no awesome, doubt. man. Well, hey, I know uh, I know you got a ton of other stuff to get going on today, Craig, so we'll cut you loose here in a minute. But I had uh, a couple things I wanted to run by before we get out of here. One I thought was just random uh, on this day in country music uh, because of who we were talking about earlier just randomly. Today in 1969, Glenn <laughs> Campbell was uh, at number one on the Billboard Country Singles Chart with the Jimmy Webb song Galveston, which he also made number four on the Billboard Top 100. There's your crossover. Uh, the song describes a soldier uh, waiting to go into battle who thinks the woman he loves and his home uh, thinks of the woman he loves in his hometown, Galveston, Texas. I still wear your sea waves. Cra- I still hear your sea waves crashing as I watch the cannons flashing. I clean my gun and dream of Galveston. In 2003, the song was named number eight in CMT's 100 Greatest Songs of Country Music. So there's you. I did not know that. Yep. Well, now what not, I did, re- not related, but still cool. What I did. Uh, recently, I did I did a some sort of interview at the Glen Campbell Museum, and when you think about it, it's like okay, that's cool. But then ask yourself, why does Glen Campbell have a museum? And then you go and you see that man did a lot of awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, in, in in music and TV and like more mm-hmm. stuff. Like you just said, number four in the Billboard Top 100. Right. That's a big deal. Right. Know? Yeah. Um, and and, so, and before that, playing in the Wrecking Crew out in California, he was a guitar right. player on all these huge, I mean, Elvis huge records and stuff. Songs, crazy crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, so. It's, Pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. It's very amazing what he did. And came from small town America like like we all did, too. That's right. But, um, but something we do, uh, two things we do here. One is the birthday song on the day you were born. The country, mu- what, the number one song in country music on the day you were born. Um, like mine, Craig probably I, knows his. No, I don't. I don't. I was thinking about it. I said, I, I maybe I. No, I don't. I uh, see. I'm a '79 mm-hmm. model like you, Craig, and mine is uh, <laughs> "I May Never Get to Heaven" by Conway Twitty, and Justin's uh, a three thirty eighty four, and his is "Roll On Eighteen Wheeler" by Alabama. Does anybody <laughs> want to take a stab at the number one song in the country on February tenth, nineteen seventy nine? I have no idea. Hell of a no. songwriter. Had a, I just referenced Elvis. He has some ties with Elvis. Uh, Great tune, too, man. Cool, cool song, too. 79. Mm. I, let's go with, uh, let's see, 79. Uh, it was the back part of. 
Man, I'm trying to think. When you say ties to Elvis, not one of your not one of your real historically country mainstays, but definitely a big time country songwriter. Uh, wasn't Sing from the that. South particularly. Name has an animal in it. Name has an animal in it. Oh. Uh, I and mean, usually song, I've got pretty good the, oh, guesses I got for these, too. but I'm stumped. And the song was, this one might help you, Craig, because you probably love this movie like I did because it's oh, from our era. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Eddie Rabbit. Eddie Rabbit. That's it. I, and the uh, song. Suspicions? And the, Nope, and the song was a movie title, and it was a soundtrack to a movie with one of our favorite Western stars playing a truck it. driver with a with a. a, a I love it. Really not. Every which way but loose. He's. Uh, remember every which, which way, way but loose. That was uh yeah. that, that was uh, Eastwood and uh, the orangutan Eddie in Rabbit. the truck. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Rabbit, big time. one of Elvis' favorite songwriters. So that was the number. That was now you know that's it. and what a cro- groovy cool song you know that yeah, that, late 70s, loose. that late seventies that late seventies some really production. cool stuff. He did, he did. <clears throat> yep. So that was uh, that's the number one song February tenth, nineteen seventy nine. Also, something we do on here, Craig, is the uh, Mount Rushmore of country music, which we have decided after the first I don't know a couple dozen tries that our guest help, helping us is there's no definitive. Mount Rushmore because there's too many greats to name. So it's a personal Mount Rushmore. So who would be on Craig Campbell's personal Mount Rushmore of country music or music in general if you got outside influences that Man, uh I can go back to some of the uh, I'll say Brooks and Dunn's one of them. Uh Clint Black. Man, I would I would have guessed uh, Clint Black for you. Clint Black, and when I say when I say Brooks and Dunn, I'm saying like this, and I guess I should re re, uh, you know, f- figure out how what the reason I picked these. And I like Brooks and Dunn was one of the first cassettes I ever bought, and it just rocked my world. Uh, so Clint Black for sure. Like I'm, I'm like Travis Tritt number is was uh, probably my favorite of all time. So Clint Black, Travis Tritt. Uh, Shenandoah, uh, and Alan Jackson, for sure. That's a like strong it. list. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I don't think anybody could deny any of those. It's just, like I said, it's too many. I mean, you could go so many ways, yeah. so it has to be personal. Yeah. There it is, uh, and that all makes sense. Like Justin said, he, you could, you, th- you could have picked that out. That black with Craig, Justin, you could see that. Clint Black. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, obviously, it's meant to be a compliment, but um, I, I think your records kind of have that similar type sound the, as, like, his first couple of albums. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely – and, I, you know, we do we, – we have all these interviews and, and talk about music and being influenced. And, and I, I, I hope people can tell that, that's, that, I, that there's flavors of all that. Uh, in yeah. the music that I make, especially the mu- music that I have control over, you know, when you were the, or at least for me, my first two records was was all Stegall, and I didn't have much say in it. Um, but these the last two years of putting out music independently, I mean, I'm producing my own stuff. I'm playing piano on it. I'm singing singing my own harmonies. I'm playing acoustic, so my hands are all over it, and so I'm hoping. That that is the case. I hope people do hear that and say, "Yeah, I get that. I see. I know where that yeah. comes from." Yeah, I certainly think you can. Right on. <clears throat> so yeah, something with that familiarity for sure. Well, I know. Uh, I know we'd mentioned a minute ago about getting back out on the road. I was just looking through your tour dates here. Y'all can go to Craig Campbell TV or dot TV. Where'd that come from, Craig? How'd you get that? Somebody have that, or you just did that early well, in your career? Well, yeah, Craig Campbell dot com was taken. Craig Campbell dot net was taken. Uh, bigger picture when I was when I was signed to them they had Big Kenny uh, and Big Kenny had had was using Big Kenny dot TV so they suggested it to me uh, so it was it was available so we just took it Craig Campbell dot TV and then all of my socials are Craig Campbell TV because of that 
Gotcha. Interesting to know. Yeah, but it's easy to find too. So Craig Campbell TV uh, dot TV. That's how you can find uh, all, everything about Craig. I was looking at your dates through here. Yeah, y'all are getting. You're stretching out too. You got to go up to Massachusetts, and then y'all going out. Y'all going out uh, across the pond to do a show in June. Yep, I'll be. Uh, I'm hauling ass up out of here during CMA Fest and going to do some shows in Atta Europe. Boy, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I always said that they don't. They one, they don't pay you to go. So if we're not, if we're if we're just off in the awards that weekend, that's even better for me. Is I got the week off, and if it and if we're working, we're going to be working somewhere that night. And there's going to be yeah, country yeah. music fans there, so for sure. Uh, but anyway, yeah. and I checked it out. So y'all make sure I'm gonna try to. Uh, there's, I mean, I was looking through here. I hope <laughs> I can be in Nashville for one of those. And so you got a few of those. Went out to Colorado. Pretty weather out there. Hopefully, so y'all go to CraigCampbell.tv and check out all his tour dates. Craig Campbell TV on all social media handles. Uh, go download by God by Craig Campbell by, by God. God. <laughs> it's by a good God. tune. And if you and if you hadn't heard Outskirts of Heaven in a while, go back and listen to that one again. Because uh, man, that, that's just a that's just a well pinned tune right there. And you sang your butt off on it. I appreciate it. Absolutely, Craig, buddy. Uh, had a ton of respect for you, man. Um, and as you, you, hopefully you know, I'm a huge fan. And um, likewise, can't, likewise, can't, brother. Thank you, buddy. Can't thank you enough for uh, for coming on doing this. And man, good luck next week with the opening, and yeah. and hopefully it's it's a good one. And and uh, hopefully we can get down there and check it out ourselves in person when, when we're in Nashville. And and hopefully we'll play some shows together here this summer, man. I, that would yeah. be a lot of fun. Get to catch it up. It would absolutely absolutely yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna awesome. send some people down. I'm gonna send some people down that way when y'all get open. I've got uh, my 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 dear friend who passed, Mr. Wayne Mills, his uh, wife and kid. They still live out in Nolansville, so I'm gonna tell Carol and Jack to come check you out when y'all get rocking and uh, some other buddy. That's a beautiful part of the country out there. But uh, <laughs> or the, do you have a website and socials and stuff for the uh, Grindstone Cowboy? Yes, yeah. So uh, the website is thegrindstonecowboy.com. Uh, Socials are Grindstone Cowboy Coffee. Like so, Instagram is at Grindstone Cowboy Coffee. Gotcha. Uh, Facebook, I think Facebook is the same. Uh, and that's we have a Twitter, but we we don't we don't check Twitter much. But we 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 uh, we do stay on top of the Facebook and the, the Instagram for for Grindstone. Awesome. Good, yeah. Everybody needs to go check that out and go to uh, uh, Grindstone Cowboy.com uh, and check out. Uh, y'all have. Um, menus up and then your schedule for all the people i heard the lineup that's great i hope man that'd be awesome to come pop in on yeah. one of those a small yeah. a small little venue like that everybody yeah. acoustic man that's the best you know i know yeah, we are, uh, we you know all, everybody does, i tell people you got to go see those when people do them because a full band show is probably gonna happen a lot but those little intimate things may or may not you know yeah and this place only holds 50 people so it won't be crowded it'll be you know chill low light just you know, we, it's a full bar, so um, it's, it's yeah. I think it's going to be a great experience for whoever whoever wants to come see the shows. Awesome, for sure. So, well, thanks again, brother. Really appreciate you. Best of luck, and hopefully, we'll catch up again soon. Right on, brother. Appreciate y'all. See you, bye, right, Craig. See yeah, you, brother. See Thank you, you. Yeah, you too. Ladies and gentlemen, that mm-hmm. was the great Craig Campbell. Uh, here on the Justin Moore podcast, uh, y'all make sure to go check that out. Craig Campbell dot TV. Uh, it's got all his tour dates up and all the links to all that stuff. And then uh, Grindstone Cowboy. What a great name! And uh, yeah, looking forward to catching a couple of Joe that there story? sometime. Yeah, really. That was interesting. Yeah, I wonder why he's so bitter about it. I mean, I, he, I don't. You know. I don't know. I'm trying to think even who wrote that song. Now I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, strange. Anyway, if they're, but, on, um, they're on Instagram. Y'all don't drill them too bad. It's all good. No. Um, but yeah, man, uh, Craig and I have known each other a while, and sounds like he'll he'll be back in an award show about about as soon as me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was I was gonna say on that if anybody wants to go look at something funny, I don't know if anybody's on uh, uh, on the socials follows my brother, Mister Chris Lee, who is Granger Smith's tour manager. He did an excellent TikTok video of recapping. Uh, the most recent award show. I highly encourage uh, you to go find that. Oh, you need uh, to send me that because I, 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 don't, I don't. I'm not on there. So yeah, I'll send it to you. Chris Lee Country. Um, <laughs> uh, I shared it on my uh, Facebook and stuff. Which uh, if you may ever talk, try to talk to me on Facebook, I don't do the chat thing on there, so I'm not going. I don't accept stuff and anything on Facebook. That's just for family and friends. But uh, on the uh, TikTok and Instagram and all that, Chris Lee Country, uh, he had a pretty good. Um, 
<laughs> he had a pretty good recap of the whole thing. <laughs> You'd get a kick out of it. That's funny. Uh, anyway, well, we, I know we, uh, it was awesome catching up with Craig. I'm so glad we got to have him on today. Um, as usual, we probably could have talked for another two hours, but uh, I know we've got some other stuff we need to get to that we missed last week, and then we've got <laughs> another repeat offender here on the podcast next week, uh, Mr. Tracy Lawrence coming on. Um, so uh, I want to you know, want to get some of this stuff knocked out today so we can have a good long session with Tracy next week. And I'm sure we'll have more comments um, and questions and shout-outs for the mailbag for next week. Uh, one I saw here I wanted to just uh, go through real quick and mention was I saw a video earlier. Uh, Mark Chestnut uh, has been out of commission lately. He had a bad back surgery that was worse than he thought. So he's uh, he's uh, doing well. He's at home resting up. Said they're going. He's going to heal up. Yep. And he said it was bad. He said don't put stuff off because he said it was it was worse than he thought. He's been out of commission for over a year. He said, um, and he, he looked it looked wow. like it was whooping him. But he said he's he's on the road to recovery now. And they're going to get back in a couple months, get some rehearsals done. And he's going to try to do some shows at the end of the year and and get back going. So uh, maybe that'd be if he does, maybe we can get. Mark come out and do some shows with us next year or something because uh, that, yeah. that's one right there. I've only got to see him play li- – see, seen him work live a few times, but, boy, boy, what a good show he puts on. So, hopefully for a speedy recovery yeah, no doubt. for Nut, uh, for sure. I uh, wanted to say happy birthday uh, as this birthday week. One is my, to my mother-in-law, Miss Rhonda. <clears throat> uh, happy birthday, sugar. Uh, and another one was the 80th birthday we had yesterday for one of the founders of the Floribama, Mr. Joe Gilchrist, the patriarch of our Floribama. Um, he had a couple of legends <clears throat> show up to uh, – he had a video intro from – Dean Dillon and then uh, Rock Kilo got up. I mean, these guys are older now, but Rock Kilo got up and did a few songs, which Rock Kilo wrote uh, Old Nashville Cowboy on Hank Jr. record and tons of other hits back in the day. And Bo Roberts, who wrote hits for those guys, for Merle Haggard and stuff. Ken Lambert, who was the <clears throat> first guy to ever play at the Floribama. Wow. 60 years ago. It's playing there, played there this week again. Still and, playing uh, music. Yep, still. <laughs> you know, much not later. much later. Yep, they still still getting it. I mean, those guys are older, but they it's still in their blood. So, once a happy birthday to Joe on here. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Oh, and if anybody saw, I know I sent you a picture. Uh, I we were talking about this past weekend. Easter was great. I did. I was a little bummed. I didn't get to spend any time with our family. Family besides Sharice and I, um, just because of logistics this year. But I did get to go to two crawfish bowls, one on a Friday and one on a Saturday, and that's yeah. That's so that was it. in uh, Orange Beach. Yeah, we went to Grice's on Friday. Then we had our um, <clears throat> Gulf Shores, Zydeco, and Crawfish Festival right here in the neighborhood on Saturday, which they did. It's, it's awesome. a you know, street party type deal with art vendors and all that stuff. And Yeah, Zydeco music all day. Yeah, it was really cool. So I got my feel on, on Crawfish um, this weekend, which was awesome. So if anybody sees that, uh, JR the Hand on Instagram and Twitter, Justin Cole Moore on Instagram and Twitter. Use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast uh, anytime you're interacting with us on social media. Uh, and remember, if you're watching or listening to this, wherever you're doing that, hit the like, rate, subscribe, all the buttons you can click, uh, and leave us ratings and a little five-star review would be awesome. Um, I was going to go through real quick our comments on our most recent episode, Raised on Red, with Heath Sanders uh, from YouTube um, last two weeks ago. Uh, let's see here. Uh, first one, Sherry, I, I just literally found this podcast. I wanted to hear some Justin Moore songs, and here pops up this. I have I have something great to watch now. Yep. Yeah, a lot of it you got to yep. catch up on. Yep. I'm glad Go you found it, Sherry. Beginning. <laughs> yep, glad to have you. Uh, this is from Evan Frazier. Awesome show in Alabama. Y'all can always throw down in Alabama. Appreciate everything y'all do. Love the podcast. Can't wait to hear the new music with Heath Sanders. Um, yeah, that was a great show. While you're looking there, great show in Georgia, too. I don't know if we've had a chance to discuss no. that. No, yeah, or, for sure. But um, we were in High, excuse me, we were in Hiawassee, Georgia, I guess it was the week following the Alabama show. Yeah, we had a so Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. A week and a half ago now, yeah. I guess. Um, and I forget the venue, but uh, there it's, it's, the, it's it's basically a a campsite, it's the mountain mountain fair <laughs> pavilion, mountain fair, yeah, mountain fairgrounds. <laughs> North Georgia Mountain Fairgrounds, something to that effect. Anyway, Sorry, but point that. being, it was really, really good and, and great crowd and 
sold out crowd and uh, the only thing that was strange to us because we all came from you know 70 degree weather or whatever it was snowing and that is north georgia which is more north i guess than i realized it was going to be it's still not in the north i don't mean it that way but and the elevation is <clears throat> much higher there but i could not believe how cold it was yes yeah, i mean it was freezing cold and snowing and yep. uh you just don't think uh, georgia in april <laughs> it's yeah. gonna snow but it darn, darn sure did and uh yeah. but it was a great show uh, as well uh, so thanks to everybody uh who came out and somebody i don't know who it was brought me a uh a really cool i'll bring it out on the next podcast actually <clears throat> and i've got his name and info a really uh, cool i gotta find it how would you describe it it's a it's wooden it's like but wooden it's, artwork yeah like wooden artwork it's like the flags they thank make you wood. but it's a flag but it, it it somehow included a razorback so it was really neat I'm, I'm not doing it justice by the way i'm describing it no and i've got the guy's <laughs> name i made but his, we'll throw his name out there maybe next week when we'll, I'll, I'll bring it in and and show it off but uh but anyway yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, Hiawassee, beautiful part of North Georgia up there in the mountains on the lake. Yeah, I left home, it yeah. was 77 degrees. I got up there, it was 37 degrees. I got out of the truck, yeah, shorts, crazy. windy switchback road. I was a little nervous that last 30 <clears throat> miles. But, yeah, great time up there. Uh, this one, next one's uh, Bailey Alexander. Justin, your music helped me through when my grandpa passed in 2021 in November. And that song, Grandpa, and if heaven wasn't so far away, help me. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, thanks for sharing uh, that. Yep. Uh, Susan, love the idea of an album tour. Someday I Gotta Quit has to be a top five Justin song for me and would be a great song live. JR, what is your favorite Justin song? That's from Susan R. Uh, my favorite JM song? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of them. And, and see, live's different for the <laughs> album, too. I mean, Backwoods always like live. I mean, I like all of them, really. Um, I like a lot of the album cuts, too, just because, you know, I don't hear them. Not that I get sick of them, but, you, you know, it's just right. oversaturated. Sometimes you hear the same ones. But I uh, <clears throat> always like middle class money. I always thought I just clever stuff. Beta Hook was the one that brought me to the dance. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, that's a good <laughs> country song right there. So, that I, I'd say Beta Hook probably. I, I, I mean, that's cliche, but it's one of your biggest songs. But I, Beta Hook's just a good song. Uh, Debbie Blanchard says, love every episode. Love Justin and JR. As a born and bred <clears throat> Gamecocks fan, thank you for the South Carolina shout out to our Lady Gamecocks ncaa championship win yeah yep. congrats again feels like they've won it for about 10 years straight they're rocking they've won a bunch of them uh, uh daniel apple uh mm -hmm. says can't wait to listen to raised on red tomorrow so awesome justin supports heath with his music and bring him on tour as well would love to see concert with y'all and granger smith but not going to be there thanks for awesome podcast every week and all the best from your biggest fan in germany Wow. So thank you, Daniel, for listening over in Germany. Um, Greg Pettigo, great podcast. I'd love to see Justin again. Are you guys coming to Colorado this year? Actually, I think we just booked something in Colorado. So, yeah, we plan on it. We always try to – we're all, we're usually in Colorado once or twice a year. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Melissa Blair, I love the new podcast. Can't wait to see it's in store for next week. We're here. You're listening to it now, Melissa. Sorry I had to wait, but here we are. Loving Life, what a wonderful podcast. Thank you for a good show and love the Bobcats. My dad has one of them at his farm. Uh, just hit them up asking about equipment. That's in limbo. They don't know. Back order this, that. The very last time I saw y'all say red on that song, y'all need to say Razorback Red. Love the podcast. It's so cool. Hmm. And really kind of get to know y'all and the other guests. Behind the scenes stuff is definitely my favorite. That's Robert Hurst. Uh, Joanna Rozier. Thank you for always listening. Ryan Penrose. Um, thanks for the podcast. Somebody honking at you. Yeah, that's Reese's home. I got the door open. This is so weird. Lola can just go out. I don't have to let her out. Uh, our buddies Tara and Clay, too. Tara said the Lafayette show was the best she'd been to. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, and she said, decided to check out JR's pick of Shelby Lee Lowe. The fact that he starts with a Gary Stewart cover one day <laughs> over and anyone cover Gary Stewart 
anymore. See you guys in Pensacola. Our eight-year-old Katie is counting down the days on her calendar. She's so excited to go to her next JM concert. Y'all be safe. We'll yeah, see y'all we'll see later. you here shortly. Yeah, as this airs tomorrow night, this will air Thursday. Tomorrow night, Friday night, uh, the 22nd, we kick off the Country Own It Tour with Granger Smith and the Reeves Brothers in Pensacola, Florida at the Civic Center. So if you don't got tickets yet, go get you some today. Y'all come on over, tell your friends. Uh, we want to see y'all there. It's going to be a good time for this uh, kick this tour off. I'm pumped about it, uh, the, the whole lineup and everything. Uh, yeah, Jason says, y'all are great. Y'all need a bus driver, truck driver? Probably so. There's Jason, you can check in with the companies in Nashville. They're definitely looking for drivers. A hundred percent you can, yeah. Yeah, Bush Heavy Entertainment um, says, I didn't miss the song. We just need more Justin Moore podcast. I'm not sure what that was. Ashley Herndon, Dora Woody, all saying what's up. Uh, Freddie says, love to see Justin at the Country to Country Festival overseas. <clears throat> yep, we're working on it, hopefully, in a couple years to come. Sal's got a birthday soon. Yes, he does, Susan. Yeah, he uh, does. Heather so Steele. Freddie. She ain't mine no more. Love that song. That was that's that's another one. It's a good one. Mount Rushmore of your favorite college football team plus plus coach as the cloud. Ooh, that'd be a tough one. We'll have to write that one down at some point for Kristen. Say that again. Mount Rushmore of your favorite co college football team plus the cl coach as the cloud. So your four favorite players from Arkansas with your favorite coach as the cloud oh. above. Oh, I got gotcha. you. We'll have to go back to that one. Yeah, I'd have to put some thought into that. Uh, Not as much as you. You got a lot more to choose from. <laughs> well, I mean, but it still gets down to you you're cutting hairs there. I mean, which one? You know, yeah, it's you know, I mean, is it is it Bart Starr? Is it Joe Namath? I mean, you know, I don't know. I didn't, you know. Um, Regina Boyce, says, I have respect for your podcast. Like to see you and Jr. the handler tour i'm sure what that meant <laughs> gary uh tour tour, talk, tour doing what yeah we're talking <laughs> hey you never know uh, <clears throat> gary phillips uh raised on red blew me out of the water cannot believe justin or this new upcoming he's sanders that would take this song to number one these are real country and can't sing the crap out of this song one of the greatest duets the song should get songs of the year <laughs> raised on red is about every single person that is real well gary's sure pumped up about the, the, no, thanks, the song gary. yeah i'm we i hear you i believe you. uh when is straight out of the country coming in cd bailey uh, alexander i don't know somebody else asked me that and i'm not sure because i know that was a digital only thing surely they're gonna put all this out on cds because they're not completely dead yet i got news for um what's her name bailey bailey they don't make cds no more it's just not going to happen. They're just going to go away with it all the way. They do not make CDs anymore. Wow. And Straight Out of the Country came out like four years ago. Mm -hmm. Or, I think. Yeah, well, it was well, three, three years, years ago. ago. It, was a, it was a digital <sighs> only thing. And I just figured at some point they would make Everything's digital only. And the only thing you can get other than uh, on your phone or device is uh, uh, vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, they don't make CDs anymore. See, somebody out there smart needs to figure out a way to make these and somehow split the money up so everybody's happy, but make cassettes and CDs of all records that way cause just to a boutique market. Yeah, well, kind of with my question. I mean, I guess my question would be, well, why would you want it on a CD? Because some people just like listening to it on a – I mean, there's some people that still want it on a CD. Or just to look at it, you want to look at the cover, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. I don't know. I mean, look, I, look I'm not arguing with you. I just – I yeah. don't – well, like I just me, know it. Like, I just know I hate to burst her bubble, but it right. ain't gonna happen. <laughs> well, because like I I'm not. I'm not talking about for my music, for anybody's music anymore. Right? Because it's, it's kind of when it's like when we went from tapes to CDs. Everybody's going what? And then right. it's just kind of the kind of the way it is. Right. Because like I still buy DVDs of stuff, so I have backups <clears> in case the weather's bad or whatever. I can always watch something. So yeah. Um, I mean, they don't even make. I mean, you think about it. They don't make CD players. They don't put them in vehicles. Right. They don't. You know what I mean? They don't. Yeah. yeah. Go, I bet they stopped putting CD players in vehicles 
five, six years ago. Right. I mean, what year that, model's your truck? 11. Does it have one? Yeah, it did. I bet that's one of the last yeah, couple of models. years, yeah. Yeah, they, um, yeah, that's a good point. But, you know, it's kind of a bummer for real people who like real music because the, the compressed, uh, all, the, the streaming stuff, all that's all compressed. It don't sound great. Yeah. CDs yeah, I sound mean, better. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they do. Anyway. They do. I just, I don't see it coming back. I mean, well, they didn't think albums would either. So maybe one day cassettes will yeah, be next. Yeah, maybe, CDs maybe, be, yeah, maybe that'll be the the vintage thing. But that's that's all kind of boutiquey. They just do it for certain projects. It's not, you know, every album or whatever. Right. Yep. That's I true. I think too uh, as an industry. Uh, not only country, but the other, I mean, this is a little off the, that topic, but kind of on online or in line with that conversation is, you know, I, I think as an industry, artists, labels, et cetera, are still trying to figure out, like, if albums are even going to be a thing in the future, or is it just going to be a song at a time, or, you know right. what I mean? Like, I hope yeah. that st- remains a thing. I know we're, you know, about to release a new album at well, sometime this year. Um yeah. so as an artist I enjoy doing an album, but I don't know if even that'll not go away also. I I don't know. Yeah. That's a good point. We'll see. The future is uh, unknown, you know. Yeah. It's like I, I watch you know me, I'm a documentary guy. I watch all kinds of history on our business and in general. Um and you know, everything uh, most of the stuff's not that old and you know things have changed a bunch since it started oh, yeah. you know i mean because even think like about it, you think about how much has changed since you and i've started in yeah. this particular business right and then to and think that only, wasn't that long ago i mean it you know 15 18 years ago yeah i mean and that, then what, and what we thought was you know the way it was when we got started that's how it's always been only 20 years before that it was different and mm-hmm. you know in the in the it was it wasn't until like the early mid seventies they even toured with production. Back then you just went somewhere and played. You didn't even you know I you didn't even carry you, PA and speakers and stuff well, with you before well, that. That was really interesting when you were talking about that recently. I forget what prompted that conversation, but I think if you want to touch on that, I think that is interesting. I think people would find it interesting. Yeah, you know, back you know, and, and listening to uh, one of my. Uh, my favorite podcast cocaine and rhinestones they talk about country artists back then you know a lot of these country artists when you'd go play somewhere you didn't even take your band with you you just went somewhere and played and they had a band ready for you like a house band house band they'd send the music ahead and stuff like that but you didn't know what kind of place it was going to be you know what what production what stage with the band you know all that kind of stuff and you know promoters back then would have doubles of people and people would pretend to be other people to go play because there was no way to know what somebody really looked like and you know you just heard them on radio so it was all kinds of crazy stuff happened but yeah the way we know touring now like with a stage getting set up and a truck coming in full of equipment getting set up and wires ran and all that that wasn't until like the early mid 70s they started doing that like some big acts like I can't even remember uh, who did you say the first big act to do it and that's what changed there it was easy top well, that was that was it. No. wasn't long after that they they did a big worldwide tour and took everything you know with them and said it was right before that that started happening. Yeah, it was big acts like you know like I'm trying to think like Billy Joel and some of those you know uh, some big rock bands that first took their own because there was inconsistencies. Because before that, say you went and played at Madison Square Garden, you just showed up and whatever PA they had and stage yeah, or whatever they had, lighting what or whatever lighting whatever, they had, yeah, is what you used. We were talking about that's kind of how. You know, certain venues probably, I mean, I don't know this, but I could see this being the case, how certain venues became well-known, great venues, if you will, because they maybe they had better production, uh, better sound. Right. Um, you know, the rooms, you know, still there are rooms that are better than others, but it's pr- pretty much anywhere you go to see a show now is pretty much the same simply because we do carry our own equipment and can dial it in yep. you know it's consistent it's it's consistent yeah that's a better way yep. to put it. It, it you know like that's maybe how the Ryman auditorium became the Ryman or um 
you know, I, yeah, I don't know what other venues to to use as an example. Or Kane's Ballroom or Kane's, you know, yeah, yeah, because they just sounded really good. And warm <laughs> it sounded better. With, maybe they had that. Maybe they had a better house band. Maybe they, yep. you know, or whatever. But acoustics it, were you, just when better. you think about it, it, it kind of would have been neat back then because you would have saw a different show. I mean, in theory, uh, depending on where you lived. Right. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. you and may see, band, a, you may see Will, Willie Nelson, for example. He's about to be here in Little Rock. You may see him at a place like Kane's that holds, what, 800 people? 700 yeah. people? I don't know what it holds, but about it's small. Yeah, maybe somewhere in there, yeah. A thousand uh, people, say. So if you're in Tulsa, you get to see him in an intimate place. And then if you go over, if he's playing in Louisiana. Atlanta or Louisiana oh, yeah. or you may see him in front of 6,000 people right. or whatever. So it would have been kind of kind of neat from that perspective. It would have been, you know, you get to see something completely different one way or the other than they saw last night right. in wherever. Yeah, and, you know, you think about, like, Woodstock <clears throat> in 1969. We had more PA at Hiawassee, Georgia, than they had for all of Woodstock. Isn't that crazy? You know what I mean? I mean, that is crazy. Yeah. Because – I mean, you're talking, yeah, hundreds half of a, thousands half of a people. million people versus, and, thousands, and we played yeah. for what th three, three or four, thousand. Yeah. four the other night, and it's just insane when you think about it. Yeah, it really is. And, and, which you know, they like didn't said, know what they were doing. You know, they didn't know that that was going to turn out the way it did. Mm -hmm. Obviously, so you think you think like in, when we were growing up in the '80s and '90s, you saw the you know big shows and all this <clears> stuff <throat> and these things and these you know music videos and all this pyrotechnics and yeah. Uh, Twenty years before that, it just didn't exist. I mean, you yeah. know, they were starting all that in the '60s, you know, with all that experimental stuff, and then in the '70s they started taking stuff on the road, and <clears> you know, it all starts from a lot of it was Broadway. It was uh, you know theater type stuff when we integrated because most of everything in our world comes from the theater and stage. Uh, so even the trucking companies back there, they were all the first trucking companies that ever took staging and equipment and stuff around was out, you know, was out of New Jersey or somewhere. And it was a it was Broadway trucking company. And I want to say they're still in business, still hauling stuff like that for musical equipment around. But that was the first one's like, you know, and I, I this little behind the curtain fun thing. I don't know if we've ever told on the podcast, but, you know, if you ever hear me or hear somebody talk about stage left or stage right or house house left or back of house or front of house or downstage, downstage upstage all that yeah. yeah all that kind of stuff that all came from the the shakespeare theater type world you know right. because if you're if you're standing on the stage that's from the stage and they say downstage because all the stages used to have a tilt to them so if they use water effects or rolling things they could move down stage so downstage is the front of the stage where you sing from and upstage is back by the curtain where Tucker's playing drums, and then stage left would be where you're standing addressing the audience to your left of the stage, and stage right, opposite if you're in the house. Uh, if you're in, you know, house right would be you're looking at you guys playing to the right. So anyway, that's where all that stuff yeah. came from was theater. So it even trickled into the first touring, touring stuff with the theater companies having the ones that had some of this equipment and then using their logistics and things like that. Because you got to think, in those days too, a sound company didn't go buy equipment from – you know, uh, Ampeg or, 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 you know, uh, whatever the big companies are um, for speakers and things like that. You had to have a woodworking shop and build cabinets and put speakers in them. You know what I mean? Right. You had to build the stuff. It wasn't, you couldn't just go get it. If you ever, like we were talking about Woodstock, if you ever watched that, the speakers they had were just big wooden cabinets with speakers in it and stuff that somebody built yeah, and for that sitting show. Sitting on the stage. Yeah. Not hung in the air. No, and no relay towers. I mean, it was like I mean, a, I, a, a I, I horn remember. like at the ball game. I mean, even in the beginning of our touring days, I mean, I remember playing a lot of shows where the they weren't hung. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The, some of those festivals and fairs and stuff, they were just stacks on the side of the stage, stage yep. right and left. I mean, yep. And so. over the years, safety concerns have changed a lot of that. You know, because we had some you know problems at shows, people Issues, getting hurt yeah. with inclement weather and stuff. Um, so anyway, well, there's a couple of fun facts for you. Hope y'all picked up. Hey, talking about the Hiawassee show, I briefly got to meet him, but uh, our main man Brady, uh, if you remember, just he was sitting uh, stage right on the far right wheelchair cowboy hat. Uh, mm -hmm. Super cool young man. His mom reached out to me, Ashley. Um, got to talk to him a little bit. Um, 
we were I'm gonna try to get y'all together and stuff, but it was snow, it was bad weather outside, so we never did. But want to give a shout out to Brady and want to say thank you for coming to the show, buddy. Uh, yeah, I know you got. A, it. Yep, we got to think you got a set list and a pick, but uh, <clears> we'll <throat> be sure to see you next time. Hope you guys come to a show again sometime soon. And I'm sorry uh, we didn't get to connect. That, yeah, we'll get your uh, cowboy hat signed and we'll get to hang out and get you a picture and all that next time. But I'm glad you guys came to the show and all smiles. So I'm glad you got to have fun, buddy. We'll see you there again uh, soon. Uh, Slipping through. Baseball's rocking on along. Uh, SEC teams filling up the top 25 per usual. Something yeah. Something I just saw it's, and um, mention. It's kind of wild, man. In the. Uh, in the West, two teams that are always up near the top of the the standings are uh, Mississippi State and Ole Miss. I mean, obviously Mississippi State won it all last year, and they're the bottom two in the SEC West right now. It's crazy. I think you guys are somewhere third, maybe second, third. Yeah, I know we uh, Ar- Arkansas is <clears throat> leading the West. Tennessee leading the uh, the East. Tennessee's I think we talked about it a week or two ago. Tennessee's really, really good. They're they're getting a little big for their britches. They've never we, really been there, done that until last yeah. year. They had a good year. Um uh I, their coach, Tony Vitalo, uh, suspended for four games right now for chest bumping the umpire, but they're they're so bush league. I mean yeah. that, like they they when they hit a home run, they put a fur coat on and like this goofy hat. It's like they act like oh they've God. never been there because they never have been there. So, right. Um, anyway, that's I know that's we my, beat them. That's Friday. my SEC baseball talk for the day. Yeah, I know we beat them Friday. It, it, it was against y'all that that he got he the he got bump. kicked out for chest chest bumping the umpire. Yeah, I mean I'm all just, about getting on an ump's ass. Trust me, I almost got tossed this past weekend for me just being a smart aleck, but I was right. I mean. Uh, about the call and so uh that's one thing but i didn't go chest bump the dude like, right. I mean, like you can't do that you can't touch them i mean yeah <laughs> it's so, crazy you kick dirt on their feet yeah right you <laughs> could pick up the you could you could delay the game and everybody <laughs> throw off, your hat but, do whatever you know, p- pull up uh first base whatever um <laughs> that one here brian montgomery says hey jr love the podcast i remember back during the first season someone said justin should write a razorback song the new raised on red maybe change raised to razorback and i believe you've got the stadium rocking so yeah, that's the second that's comment we've had on that thank you brian for sending that in um let's see the next one i got here what is uh, this? Is from Nathan Garvin on uh, Insta says, "What Midwest state is Justin's favorite to play in?" Hashtag Justin Moore podcast. Hashtag flying down a back road. That's really tough because they really are all good. Um, I, I've commented on that a number of times, that, and we've talked about it actually. In disappointment, as much as we love the South and are proud to be from here, sometimes the shows are not as good as. Um, you would imagine um, the last two weeks have been really good in the yeah. South. Thank uh, y'all, Alabama and Georgia but, for representing. <clears throat> but I've talked, I've talked about the fact that I don't know that it's any better uh, anywhere in the country that it is in the Midwest. I, mm. I, I firmly believe that, and that's not a knock against anywhere else. Just the it, the crowds are usually insane. Yeah, uh, Michigan's always great. Um, Pennsylvania is always great. I would consider Wisconsin Midwest. They're always yeah. good. Illinois, um, Indiana, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. As much as that makes me cringe, Ohio is always. If represents. I it, if you made me choose one, and this is not a slide against any of the rest of them, I'd probably say Ohio. Yeah, probably me too. Probably say and Ohio, I'll, and I only say cringe not because of the people because I lo- I've got lots of good friends and family from Ohio, but just because Ohio State. Uh, so no knock on the state of Ohio, just the <clears throat> football team, but just the uh, Ohio but, state, yeah. not the state of Ohio. <laughs> right. But yeah, uh, I had to say that too. Ohio, the people are fun. It's real Probably country Ohio. folks, hardworking folks, you know, and it's, I mean, it's, it's slim because all those other ones I mentioned and you mentioned are, are, 
it's always great also because ain't nothing like a field party somewhere in illinois or, or a state fair or in michigan or a county fair in michigan yeah. or something yeah always good so yeah, yeah we've I'd say, played up there a, a bunch but there, i there are when you ask me that there are a number of venues and festivals and stuff that pop right in my head about ohio country I, concert I remember i mean country concert hobart arena we've played a number of times hodag all that stuff yeah so yeah good stuff yeah, um good cassie wrote in she said one of my favorite <clears throat> merch items is my air freshener i got at a miranda show years ago it's long ago lost its scent but i refuse to take it down could definitely use a jr one to go with it merch ideas and she sent me a picture not a bad one I've got hmm. one in my drawer here of my nephew when he was born that they got made that I'm saving for life till he gets that's a car a, and we'll hang it. That's a very interesting uh, merch item, <laughs> an air yeah, I remember, uh, I remember as a, uh, Jason Bowl and the Stragglers out in Texas, they had a song back in the day, My Baby Loves Me When I'm Stoned, and uh, they had rolling papers made up for the uh, for that song. Yeah, that's that makes sense, that. but air fresheners. Where, I wonder where, what was the tie in there, I wonder. I don't know. What's well, been platinum? Um Let's see, here we got, uh, oh, my boy Dalton Bush. Uh, if y'all are ever in the Alabama area, Georgia, anywhere, and you see my boy Dalton Bush playing somewhere, y'all go check him out. That's real outlaw country music right there, young fella. He said, I want to be J.R. the Handler when I grow up. I told him some days are better than others, Hoss. Uh, B. Adams. Uh, oh, this is this is, this is why I saved this one. All right, my boy B. Adams on the air. Um, you guys probably already figured this out, but I'm assuming that listeners commented you read about JM and the heart attack was in reference to when he was talking about his shoulder and neck being tight when he got that massage before the show. Remember the other week a listener said something yeah. about, about the heart attack thing we, and we didn't know what they were talking about. That was when you were talking about you had doubled down on the massages on one of those oh, yeah, shows. I got three you hours like, worth of a massage right before <laughs> playing a show, which you was felt a terrible idea. Strange. You felt stoned was, or something. Yeah, that's what that was. Uh Stephen Floyd says, "JR, can't wait to see JM and Picola on 4:22 coming to PCB for my birthday. Are y'all uh, uh, y'all going to be there early to party? I'm not sure. We're going to try to be there. We're going to talk about that after the show when we're going to get to town and all that. But we'll definitely be in Pensacola Show Day, ready to rock. Uh, I think we're going to have some good weather, so that's uh, that's exciting. Uh, always. Yeah, we uh, we haven't even discussed travel and stuff." Mm -mm um this is some uh, some of the um reviews were left on the um itunes uh podcast app i uh, just wanted to read a couple of these some of the most recent one y'all make sure to go leave them on there and i'll try to read those um when i can get to them as well um this is from a briz 970 love i can't wait for this podcast to come out every week by far my favorite love the behind the scenes uh blaine blaney fan 22 Job well done. Thanks for looking into your personal lives, touring stories, and your friends slash guests. The reading from Charlie Daniels book is nice touch, and both of your willingness to share your faith is incredible. Uh, pretty good girl uh, said, "Love Kate on the podcast. Listening to number three, and Kate is spot on. Men do listen. Do not listen when we talk. Have her on more and more. Mm -hmm. So we still got to get Kate on. Um, we talked about it before. We got to have to have her on, even if it's just for a clip before the." Uh, <clears throat> the tracy thing um to get her rebuttal about a few things and also i got to put on her radar i talked to uh rich uh the other day uh or yesterday actually and he and heidi are going to come into town a day early they, he said he was trying to get with you about maybe coming in early i said y'all we had to go do something and this and that but they're going to come in on that saturday so not sure if all the christmas ornaments are still in the second guest bedroom or not but which what are you talking about for for the golf tournament oh 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 Gotcha. Two weeks away. Okay. I know. That's why I wore my shirt today. I got my St. Jude shirt on, y'all. We got Justin's golf tournament coming up uh, first of next month uh, there in Little Rock. Um, so excited about doing that again. But yeah, so we're going to, they're going to fly in Saturday and we're going to meet up. I did, told him, I said, I don't know if you guys got ball games or not. I said, if he does, we'll just go to his house and wait on him. If not, we'll see him when we get there. Because he's like, oh, I hadn't heard back from him. I was like, uh, <laughs> I, what do you need? I'll let me figure this out. Yeah, I was like, just, yeah. just meet us there. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about the golf tournament. That's coming up soon. Uh, let's see what else I got I didn't, That's here. sneaking up on us. I didn't realize it was that soon. Yeah, it's just a few weeks away. Yeah. Um, I got Braxton Varnell. What a great name. Yeah, uh, right. 
he said, just to let you guys know, the podcast is awesome. I'm just a small-town farmer from North Carolina. Glad to see there are some still good old boys out there like you and Justin. Y'all make long hours in a tractor a hell of a lot easier. And then he sent me a picture of him on a big John Deere. I mean, he's moving. He's he's doing fields. Uh, field hours starting, trying to catch up. Appreciate y'all. It's him listening to the podcast. Be safe out there, Braxton. Appreciate you, buddy. Oh, this is one a uh, guy had asked um, about it. We had mentioned this before about our top uh, wedding love songs. This is uh, <clears throat> Dylan Le- Lineberger. Hey, JR, we're coming up close on our wedding in May. I thought I would give you all an update on the music we chose. The beautiful bride Bailey will walk into I Don't Want to Go to Heaven by Nate Smith. And our first dance will be Prayed for You by Matt Stell. We're also trying to get Heath to attend to sing Love Needs Making for our last dance song. We are from just north of his hometown, Marshall in Harrison, Arkansas. But he had asked what our what uh, favorite uh, wedding love songs would be, and mm. um, I'm not much of a. I you know we we I'm did not uh, much of a favorite wedding. <laughs> yeah, we did one guy, but um, uh, one of yours was one of ours was um that's the way you uh to know uh, the way you love me. That that's how I know you love me. That's how I know you love me. Is that that it? was one of ours. Yeah, that was a that's a good one. Man, I really like that song. I didn't write it. I'm not bragging about it in terms of that. I just really like the song. I'm glad we cut that. I, I thought that would have been a hit record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and here never this, put it know, out. I mean, it was on an album, but. right? And um, here in the South, you know, mother uh, son dance always got to be simple, man. Uh, oh yeah. I'm um, trying to think. Wedding love song. Um, Boy, I don't know that I'm the guy to ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, what a Wonderful um, World, Louis Armstrong. I mean, when our, a man loves uh, a woman, Percy Sledge. Our first dance was um, At Last by Etta James. That's another good one. A classic. I, I, I guess to answer the question, I'm a fan of the uh, classic stuff the classics, like that. Yeah. Like, 50, you know, maybe 50 years old, but um, I'd say stick to the basics. Yeah, for me. Those, uh, time, time, yeah, they've stood the test of time. But congrats, Timeless, guys. Yeah. Um, what was the other one I had here? Congrats, and did it say when they're getting married? Uh, May 7th, I believe. Yeah, and way to go uh, by not getting married in football season. Right. Add a boy. Um, Zachary Briscoe wants a shout out here on the podcast coming all the way from Euless, Texas. So what's up, Zach Briscoe? Up, great man? Briscoe name. Wonder if you're any kin to the uh, Briscoe brothers wrestling family from Oklahoma. Um, and I got you, uh, got you something on your way there. To the few people I talked to on here, Joanna, and a few other people that I've, I've did get some of that old stuff I had in the mail sending to you guys should get to you soon. Um, that's about all I got. I've, I've got some other stuff. I'm gonna save it for next week. I know I mentioned earlier about listening to Cocaine and Rhinestones podcast. If y'all are uh, any big George Jones fans out there, go back and listen to that last season because he did a excellent job breaking down some George I need Jones to go listen history. To that one. And I can tell you something. I found out of it. One of George Jones' favorite movies, while he and Tammy Wynette were married, this movie came out in the early mid '60s. A movie called Requiem of a Heavyweight, um, and it's got some. Um, this guy playing a heavyweight boxer that ends up having to go be a wrestler, and it's uh, Anthony Quinn. Um, it had Jackie Gleason, one of my favorite actors of all time, was his manager. Anyway, it's a really interesting movie, and uh, it, it made George Jones cry at the end of it. It said he'd sit up and watch it, and he'd cry at the end of it every time. And uh, But I, I, if you like older stuff and you like cool stuff, this was George Jones' favorite movie, so I'm going to say my movie recommendation of the week is Requiem of a Heavyweight um because it was george jones favorite movie and uh i, I bought it on of course you know i bought it because you know i'm gonna watch it and make you watch it a couple times mm-hmm. but um uh, very interesting movie and it's got old classic wrestlers in there and uh and boxers muhammad ali's in the movie he's boxing That's muhammad right ali, your, uh, ali 62 yeah and then he goes to wrestle haystacks calhoun but it, it it's just kind of a I don't know. It was interesting. It was deep. It was deep. I'll say that because he was a boxer that got fell and he couldn't he wanted to keep boxing but he couldn't but the manager and them still need to make money, so they wanted to be a wrestler, and they made him be a Native American. But anyway, it was it was wild. So I would say that. And another movie I just watched last night, and I know you've probably never seen it because I'd never seen it until last night, but I had to because I'd 
heard about it but never did was from 1975 the movie nashville anybody that's out there ever seen the movie nashville uh I've never even heard of it send me a send me some if you've seen it or not it's uh i don't even know how to describe this movie it's a uh, it's like a parody documentary type thing of nashville in the mid 70s but it's shot in nashville with uh, anyway very interesting very interesting movie nashville the movie from the 70s y'all go check that Does out it have I, anything I, to do with the music industry oh yes yeah, the whole thing oh yeah they got a f oh. fake they got somebody kind of being a george and tammy type and then the young oh it's got all these different characters in it and uh merle kilgore's in it merle kilgore's got a role wow. in it, of course he, he, he he's of got course. a role in there and as soon as i heard him talking i couldn't really make it i had to google it. is merle kilgore in this movie like, oh my god merle's in this movie wow so anyway go check that out that's about all i've got for the week uh again i uh, want to send our wishes out to mark chestnut uh hopefully him a speedy recovery get back out on the road thanks to craig campbell for coming on and spending some time with for us today sure. y'all remember to go to craig campbell.tv to check all craig's stuff out and um craig campbell tv on instagram twitter uh, and all that fun stuff and then go check out the grindstone cowboy uh next week uh and then anytime after that if you're in nashville area it's worth the trip down there uh, it's a pretty drive probably take you 25 minutes from downtown nashville to get down there so y'all <clears> yeah, check that you're out right, man it's a super super pretty area it's just rolling big green hills and yeah. pasture land and stuff wide um, open Mm -hmm. so congrats to him on getting that kicked off i hope nothing but the best for him and his wife and family on getting that going um glad he didn't kill some 14 year old for making out with his daughter <laughs> uh, not sure how that's going to turn out when when we have to deal with it yeah but um uh, thank him for coming on and thanks last week for heath to coming on and uh, thank you for jumping on with us Justin. thank you everybody out there in country music podcast land for listening every week and making this thing a success and keeping this thing going for now almost 100 episodes uh over i mean what three years now we've been doing this yeah crazy to think pretty amazing yep yep yeah, a lot 20, more 21 22 yeah and a lot more a lot more fun stuff to come like i said next week we've got slated uh to have our old buddy tracy lawrence come on and I mean, that we've we figured out there's only one person who's got more swag than him, and that's that's straight. But uh, the king of country swag, uh, Tracy Lawrence, will be on with us next week. Yeah, so, and we, the, the cool thing about about it, we've done this now, and people are reaching out to us saying, "Hey, can I jump on? I've got this or that going." And mm -hmm. so that's pretty neat. Yep, for sure, for sure. Especially you know as we get busier and busier. <laughs> uh, and y'all go to JustinMoreMusic.com because we're going to get this tour cranked and we've got a bunch of more dates on the books so we're going to be on the road in a city near you soon uh says so this airs on thursday the 21st uh tomorrow the 22nd will be in pensacola florida uh then we've got may 5th knoxville tennessee may 6th huntington west virginia may 7th ben salem pennsylvania may 12th everett washington 13th kennewick washington may 14th nampa idaho then the 19th, Park City, Kansas. The 20th, Ralston, Nebraska. The 21st, we will be in Mankato, Minnesota uh, for the month of May. So y'all check out justinmoremusic.com. Go on the tour page, and you can see where all those dates are and get tickets if you don't have some already. And uh, we'll see y'all on the road. Yeah, thanks, guys. We appreciate you tuning in. Thanks again to Craig Campbell, and we will talk to y'all next week. Thanks, everybody. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 44, Hurtful Words. A soft answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15.1 Many years ago, while doing a radio interview, I said something about a band that would be on a future show with us. It was not mean, condescending, or in any way disparaging, but still not as complimentary as it could have been. And it was certainly not meant as criticism or even judgment, as I had never even heard the band play. <clears throat> Their name simply came up in the course of the interview, and I made a very bland statement basically saying that I was not familiar with them. One of the band members was listening and took what I said as a bit of an insult. I ran into him years after the incident and he brought it up. He recalled it word for word and the offhand remark I had made was still a distasteful memory. 
So many old adages are based in truth. And if, and if you can't say something good about somebody, it's best not to say anything at all is one of them. So many old adages are based in truth. And if you can't say something good about somebody, it's best to say nothing at all is one of them. Words are powerful and can't be unspoken. Choose carefully the ones you use. Let's all make the day count.